So let's go ahead. I'm going to just show you a PowerPoint. I've, I haven't done the whole PowerPoint. It's just a, a few slides from a PowerPoint that I've created about Kanayim. And let's just look at that and see if this fits what we know about Caniam maculatum. Now, Caniam maculatum, which is also uh, referred to as poison hemlock or spotted hemlock, is a member of what's referred to, used to be referred to as the umbelliferae family. Uh, it's now called the Apiaceae with the uh, new taxonomical system based on DNA uh, called the angiosperm phylogeny group system. They've changed a lot of the names of the botanical families, and now umbelliferae is called Apiaceae. It's also the common name for the carrot family. You've got things like parsley and uh, many other uh, plants, celery, uh, are all in this particular family. It was actually, interestingly enough, the very first botanical family that was identified towards the end of the uh, 16th century. Okay, And this is a very famous plant. It's the one that, uh, that, was, that Socrates was forced to ingest in 399 BC and one of the reasons it's so interesting is because they, they told him to, to drink this, to kill him, because he was he was having a negative influence on the youth of Athens. And if you think about what Socrates is trying to do, is he was trying to change this fixed view of the world that people had. He was trying to, using the Socratic method, the, the method of dialogue, which we see in the Platonic dialogues, he was trying to engage the youth so that they would actually think about things and not just accept fixed dogma. And one of the reasons I find that to be so interesting is that one of the characteristic symptoms of Kanayim is of fixed ideas or fixed notions. Um, and it's amazing. They gave Socrates exactly the perfect substance uh, that has the symptom of being fixed to address the facts that he was trying to essentially resolve the fact that people were having fixed ideas and notions uh, in, the, in, in the Athens of that period. It's also interesting that this idea of fixed actually expresses itself not just on the mental emotional plane, but it expresses itself in the indurations that we see in Kanayim, the, the hard tumors or cancerous hard indurated tumors that we see in this particular remedy. And we also see this very much in the idea of superstition, which is a common symptom of Kanayim, again, representing this idea of having some type of fixed idea or fixed superstition about things. Now, one of the indications that comes out very prominently in the proving and has also been clinically verified for Kanayim is the idea of dizziness, uh, which is brought on by and aggravated very much by turning the head sideways, but general motion will aggravate them, lying down, any type of movement, and also descending as well. It's a remedy we think of when the, the person, an individual man or woman, has lost a partner and they have no ability to uh, have continued sexual relations because they tend to be very fixed and wedded to that particular individual. And they're not a promiscuous type of person. They just need the regular gratification of sexual release. And now that their partner is no longer available, they have difficulty going on to somebody else. And without that gratification, this causes an aggravation for them and many different types of health issues arise. So what we see in Kanayim is a tremendous attachment, especially to their partner. It's almost a kind of materialistic ownership. It's different than what you would see in Lachesis, where they completely control and possess the person and don't let them do anything and feel very jealous about, you know, their attention being directed towards anybody else, even though they're out, you know, philandering and being liber libertinistic and having multiple sexual relations with other people, they couldn't tolerate uh, their partner. This is very different. It's kind of just this attachment to the person. They feel very comfortable, very fixed, very uh, 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 santosha in their relationship to this other person. And what happens is the, the with the loss of the husband or the wife uh, and the lack of the ability to have a sexual outlet, this results in many different kinds of health problems. Another thing that we'll see very strongly in Kanayim is uh, an inability to sustain mental efforts and also a dislike for society, a disinclination to business, an indifference, and a depression of the spirit and anxiety as well. And we saw all we saw this very much: an indifference, a depression, and an anxiety. I even said that, you, that the the, this, the sadness and the anxiety were palpable in the case. And what did she say? She felt isolated and had a disinclination for communication with other people. 
So on the emotional plane, we'll see a hardness, that fixedness, an indifference, a depression, and then an, an alienation from family or loved ones. And that's exactly what she was describing. She didn't want, now that her husband was in this diabetic coma, she didn't want to have any relations with anybody else. These are people who cannot be happy. They're unable to cry. And uh, they may have feelings, but they kind of become petrified and indurated. They cannot be moved and they become gloomy and unhappy and they don't want any company and they're unable to communicate with others. It can sound a little bit like a remedy like natrium muriaticum or nitricum acidum, but it has a little bit of a different type of quality associated with it. 